Let's rock and roll, boys. Hello and welcome to another Nintendo podcast. I'm Austin Cummings and I'm joined as ever by Matthew Schultz. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hi, you. Uh, Matt, it has been a while since our last ANP together, so we have a lot of things to cover, some of which is going to be a review from when you talk to Danny. I'm going to quiz you on your right. conversation, make sure <laughs> your story hangs up airtight. Ooh, okay. Uh, but also, you and I have a few things to talk about regarding these three topics. One, our latest on the Nintendo Switch redesign rumors. Mm -hmm. Two, our initial impressions of SteamWorld Quest on oh, the yeah. Switch. And also, Nintendo's plans at E3, which they just uh, unveiled today at the time of recording. All or right. uh, probably now post E3 by the time the audio <laughs> you're, video are up. It's already this. over. E3 2020 is around the corner, and you want to find out 2019 schedule? You came <laughs> to the right place, babies. <laughs> A&P, episode 35-ish. Uh, in any event, Matt, Ish. shall we kick off the show with what we uh, always do? That's right. What where are we? Is this bigger than the news? Because if it is, I think you know it. <laughs> bigger in the news. We're running a real tight ship today. Okay, Matt, let's kick it off. First and foremost, you pulled up an article regarding Nintendo and their cloud-based future. We're not talking about Cloud Strife, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate fans, or Final Fantasy VII Remake trailer fans, which just went up today at PlayStation State of Play video. Not talking about that. Matt, tell us what the future holds. <laughs> Sure, yeah, Nintendo um, in March at an investor's Q&A that they were having, a uh, post-investor meeting, um, they, got, they got a question about cloud gaming and kind of the approach, especially in, you know, when, when Google and Microsoft are kind of hardcore heading in that direction. Um, mm -hmm. It was only a matter of time before Nintendo was going to be posed this question publicly, and that was, uh, um, quote, amid a significantly changing uh, external environment, including a cloud gaming and 5G, uh, world, what are your thoughts on the future of Nintendo's core integrated hardware and software business? Um, and this was directly at the president, Furukawa. Um, and he had to say, uh, I don't think all games will move to the cloud right now. Very Nintendo. Uh, but the so, technology uh, is steadily advancing. Also very Nintendo. <laughs> very Nintendo. Uh, Can't argue with that, baby. <laughs> In the future, I expect that technologies such as the cloud and streaming will evolve further as a way to deliver games to consumers. We must mm. keep up with such changes in the environment on the other hand i believe that our core value unique entertainment experiences that can only be achieved through the development of integrated hardware and software will further increase in value delivering unique entertainment that only nintendo can create will continue to be our top priority Sick. so <laughs> yeah and dabbed on the reporter and mm -hmm. he went home crying <laughs> and you're uh, out of there <laughs> mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. uh i guess i i wanted to talk about this because yeah like this is like like, I don't know. Do you remember years ago when Nintendo was getting the, like, constant, like, when are you going to go high def? Right. You know? Um, and they're like, high def is a higher definition. This <laughs> we can agree on. And in the future, <laughs> definitions will become higher. Higher. And Nintendo yeah. will will deliver top games. Next question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, it's, this mm -hmm. is, it doesn't seem new. It's kind of like uh, meet the new boss, same as the old boss, right? Like, right. this is a... Uh, a standard approach Nintendo's taking. They're going to wait until it becomes uh, a cheaper, more accessible technology. Exactly. Um, and then they're going to jump on board. And we're st <laughs> we still haven't... And then they'll, they'll do a sloppy, lazy job for years and years. <laughs> we'll all pay $20 a year. We'll still sign up for it, even though Xbox Live has been better since, like, 2001. Um, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I think you're totally on with this. So... Okay, we're talking about future cloud gaming. We've talked about it on the podcast before, right. uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, I believe, and um, and also the Resident Evil 7, the, the Japan version of those games that could be streamed. But So it's like you have this classic Nintendo situation where, in some degree, they're showing uh, maybe some bit of a new interest in advancing the technology, incorporating it in a way that we don't tend to see. Right. Mind you, you can play Assassin's Creed Odyssey in a Google chrome browser right so it's like you should be able to play it on the switch and we have google stadia coming out it's all streaming so the technology is totally there no reason why the switch couldn't but then you have 
this other scenario where I saw an article this week, article, but basically a report that Crash Team Racing on the Nintendo Switch will not support even the cloud saves. Nintendo so far has had like Pokemon Let's Go, there's no cloud saves. You can't do it. It's one of the few games. And then you can kind of convince yourself like, oh, okay, like Nintendo's worried about people exploiting the system, right. you know, training the Pokemon, and then restoring a save. And then right. I was like, well, there's also no cloud saves for Dark Souls. And it's like, okay, well, it's a serious gamer's game. Maybe there is an exploit, even though Dark Souls is on every system under the sun. <laughs> you can definitely cloud save on those, but I guess there must be a reason. And then, then it's like, Crash Team Racing will support. And it's like, this is clearly just like a, a laziness on Nintendo's part for some of these games where it's just... The infrastructure isn't there. Are they just not ready? To use. Yeah. They're not pushing it. They're not communicating yeah. it. Something obvious is falling by the wayside. And um, you look at the Nintendo Switch app, you know, we're in year two now. You can look at the Smash Bros. stages, the, the creator-made stages, right. which is neat. But mm-hmm. the, you know, interface is terrible. The app is still worthless. Like, you still, the party chat thing is inconsistent for, you know, <laughs> Fortnite doesn't need it. Other games do. Like, it's, um, I think Mortal Kombat 11 may be does use it it's just like the it's all a mess a confusing mess and i do not see nintendo doing cloud save anytime soon and frankly now this is now my nintendo apologist which is why any listener would join <laughs> ANP is to get some good <laughs> nintendo apologies but Here we go. Um, you know i'm of the mindset we had uh, a few weeks ago mark cerny for playstation right yeah. answer those questions about ps5 and talk about a little bit about the tech specs and uh, the the lighting and sound render system they're going to use that's similar of that of the film industry. It's all very exciting. And um, in that context, I think that there's an element to um, to even that announcement where he's Mark Cerny was saying like this box is just another like it's a better PlayStation. You yeah. know, it's not Stadia. It's not a hybrid device. It's just like a better version of what we have. And I love Nintendo for mainly the handhelds. I play my Switch yeah. 85, 90% of the time in handheld. Right. And I cloud gaming would be a big issue. All right now, uh, if you're watching the YouTube video, you'll know I got a new apartment. Come check it out. It's really sick. <laughs> it's called the Renaissance Inn, Marriott, and Bend, <laughs> Oregon. So come see me. The um, And so it's like, this is where I do a lot of my gaming, though. And if I were... If I needed a stable internet connection, you drive out to Bend, Oregon to do all your gaming. <laughs> all my gaming. It's just like a quiet, safe place for me. Yeah. Check out yeah, Days Gone on PlayStation 4, Bend, Oregon. Um, and, you know, but it is something where I'd be limited if I had to use an always online service. I'm glad we're still not there. Yeah. Um, you know, I, it would be nice to have more quality of life features, but today there was an announcement that Tetris 99. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is the Nintendo Switch Online exclusive game, which is really yep. the only perk that in Smash Bros. Online to use the, the yearly subscription service for Nintendo. They announced an offline mode is coming to that game. It's nine ninety nine, but it has, like, you can play against the CPU, and they're going to be rolling out new challenges. Oh, interesting. Which is cool. They must and have seen a, all... a high, uh, like, level of user rate then, right? Like, um, there must have been just so much interest sure. in it. And frankly, like... That appeals to me, like in right. that I like Tetris 99, um, but I'm always on the go. I don't always have the internet connection. Yeah. And um, it would just be great to, do I already have Puyo Puyo Tetris? Yes. Do I want to have a second game, a second means of playing this exact same game? Absolutely. And so <laughs> to have that, though, offline, like, that's why I, you know, like Nintendo consoles. And I would like it if the Nintendo Switch online games, the virtual console stuff, was also available as an offline option. because. Yeah. Like, especially when you consider, like, a Zelda 2 came out, and it they did a neat thing where it came out with, since that game has some light RPG elements, you can upgrade Link, which is the hero of Legend of Zelda series, um, spoiler oh. fans out there, <laughs> it's not just the princess anymore, yeah. team. Um, <laughs> since you upgrade Link throughout that game, you can, it, it requires you, because the game is so hard, to do a lot of grinding. That's not fun in yeah. and, and that game, although I'd love a good grind. But the, in the version they released, you can start at like max level which is great because the game still has tech a technical challenge to it but you don't need to like keep killing a bunch of yeah. wizard characters to get like the best when i beat the game originally that's how i did it. i just did tons of grinding yeah. in this one area to get my max stats um and it's nice to take that out of it but it's like i couldn't make progress on that experience on the go if i wanted yeah. because it is tethered to the online service i hope and i trust i think the nintendo will be slow to adopt this and it'll be in our favor yeah 
I mean, I, I would I would like to see this come years down the line when they've perfected whatever the the next iterations of the Switch are. Um, you know, and I, I've always appreciated that about Nintendo, for better or for worse, when they they're like ready to adopt something when the time is right for them, and it's never it's never been it's never affected negatively affected the gameplay. You know, it's never really, never negatively affected you know the amazing games that they put out. Like like sure, you know Mario. Uh, um, uh, sun, sunshine, well, sunshine mm-hmm. for sure. Um, but even Galaxy One and Two, game, yeah. <laughs> you know, they weren't HD games, but they were still beautiful, right? And um, you know, we yeah. Have... If, I mean, if HD were to stand for like hyper dope, like they were that, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but the, the same thing with like you know playing Mario Kart online. You know, it it took a while to get it to like a, a good spot. For it sure. could still be at a better spot, but like. Nintendo. We bought it twice. And we bought it twice. (laughs) Actually, I did see a really interesting article uh, about how Mario Kart Wii U uh, and Mario Kart uh, Wii, uh, Mario Kart Wii is actually still selling more units than Mario Kart Eight on the Wii U. Uh, Uh, Well, nuts. That's nuts, (laughs) but I believe it. It's nuts till you consider like the people on their Wiis. Like, yeah, it's very true. Um, Anyways, so uh, yeah, I thought that was really interesting. Um, I'm sure we'll get some cloud gaming from Nintendo when we're, you know, in our 60s, but uh, right. it'll be great. When um, literally, internet access is just like everywhere, and it's like, it's like breathing. Nintendo's yeah, <laughs> exactly. You need it just to just to like get any any part of your day, just to open any door. You need to like do a voice command. At which point, Nintendo will then finally adopt an online structure <laughs> um, yeah. where you can actually message a friend. All right, internet mm-hmm. access will be uh, universal, like like just like healthcare, right? When we're 16, just like healthcare, maybe. we're there, baby. <laughs> we're there, and it's never gonna go away. <laughs> no one worries. AMP about it. got polluted. Okay. <laughs> So um, let's talk about uh, uh, the Switch Mini. You know, we've talked about this uh, at, at length in the past, but uh, we specifically wanted to bring up the Bloomberg article that kind of gave us, uh, as the, as the average you know, Nintendo fan and consumer um, a, around the world, the, the basically the most recent update on what's happening. And right. uh, that was in their article, uh, specifically this paragraph. Um, it's, quote, uh, growth in the current period uh, will get a boost from a launch of a new, cheaper version of the Nintendo Switch. Um, and I should say that this, really briefly, this article was about um, kind of Nintendo's uh, uh, market share, how it's been doing over the past, uh, especially uh, this past year, um, when they didn't quite hit the sales numbers that they projected, uh, or mm-hmm. they, they, they projected themselves and they took back. And at the same time, it's, it's come out that they're potentially going to do business in China, and that spiked... Right. You know, um, like fifteen you know, percent stock, stock price. Stock. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, but this was kind of embedded in that article. Um, so, <laughs> all right, take it from the top. What's the quote say from Bloomberg? My Here we boy. go. And that quote is: um, <laughs> "Growth in the current period will get a boost from the launch of a new, cheaper version of the Nintendo Switch." According to two people familiar with the matter, um, who wanted to remain anonymous and discuss their private plans in an anonymous way. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, back and, to the quote. Anonymity was important to them. <laughs> <laughs> the new device will likely be launched by the end of June, uh, according uh, to one of the people. Uh, and the existing Switch will receive a modest upgrade this year, though a more powerful version is not in the works. The people said, uh, mm-hmm. and those quote. people were Austin Cummings and Matthew Schultz, <laughs> whispering and said, to Bloomberg, <laughs> we want shouting to into the blackness anonymous. of space. The um, yeah, okay. So just to recap on that. Recap is we're getting a cheaper switch, allegedly, according to Bloomberg, mm-hmm. we're based on their anonymous sources in June, and then a modest upgrade for the switch, but not a more powerful version later this right. year. So, um, first thing is at the time of recording, it's May 9th. So that means we are less than two months away from a totally new switch potentially for a switch mini or a cheaper switch. This would not be the first time Nintendo has announced and turned around a console in a very short a redesign. On a short time frame, very akin to the 2DS, which is basically announced and then available basically immediately, right? very quickly. I think the new 2DS XL had a lead up of also about two months or so. Um, okay, so gut reaction, Matt. Do you think a Nintendo Switch Mini, or some sort, will be out by the end of June, if you yeah. have to make a bet? Yeah, I do. You think I- that soon? 
I think so. I mean, I think it works well with their E3 plans. We don't know what's coming. Uh, that hasn't been announced yet. But I do think that, like, you know, I could see them packaging uh, Mario Maker 2, you know, with this cheaper bundle, especially in summer. You've got a lot of kids who who still like I work at a university. I, I work with a lot of students who are like, yeah, I want to get a switch. Actually, this would be perfect. I work with a couple of people who have smaller hands. who are like, oh, that's that's great. It's cheap. It's cheaper. So I can afford people it. People with and smaller hands. It's a small hands team. It's good to have, I have, a, good to I have, have a, a lot of hand. smaller mm-hmm. yeah, uh, staff that I work with. And um, I don't know. I mean, I, I remember when the do you remember the, the, the 2DS, like the wedge came out, like they just kind of yeah. pumped that out out of nowhere. Right. It was um, like, I remember Brian Altano from Nintendo Voice Chat and IGN saying, like, right, he got Reggie pulled him into it, a room. Right. He said, yep, yeah, 2DS coming out. Everyone's like, oh, this must be like a prank. And then sure enough, Reggie pulled it out. It looks like a doorstop. And then it was out like within a month. Yep. Uh, and actually purchased one with The Legend of Zelda for uh, an event we're doing here. We'll see if anyone Ooh. wants to, to, you know, put their tickets in that raffle item. Okay. And I just found out the time frame really briefly on this. Which is that the uh, Nintendo 2DS was announced on August 28th, 2013. It was out in North America and Europe by October 12th, 2013. So it was about a month and a half. Wow. Um, so very quick. And uh, did you ever play the 2DS? Just out of curiosity or really hold it or play with it? Which one? The, 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 uh, the, like the Wedge? The, the Wedge 2DS. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I love that thing. I think it is so cool. Like the form factor is so great like it feels like a traditional game boy or like game boy pocket yeah and i've given two of them like as gifts and in fact i even looked up yesterday on the nintendo official store you can buy refurbished versions of like the more recent colors like the really yeah. there's a really cool blue one and a red one um for like 45 dollars. like it's oh, so wow. expensive which is what i did one friend had never gotten into he loves nintendo but he was kind of lapsed and a big sony guy and i was like you gotta check out like fire emblem and persona and so because he loves persona and event and it was a good gift and my sister i replaced the 3ds for her when her circle pad eventually broke as they all do um with a 2ds and she played it all throughout her time in south africa in the peace corps and uh yeah i mean it's awesome kind of reminds me of like a a, you know a kindle versus a tablet right it's like a little more durable you can kind of chuck it around like you're not worried about it It doesn't do all the things a tablet does but it's you know you know, you don't have the 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 3D, but do you really need the 3D? No. Um, but, and do you really need the Nintendo apologist. I loved that 3D. On, on the <laughs> I, lo- I thought it was always so cool. I, I loved it, it for um, what Link Between Worlds, and maybe that was it. I loved it for Face Raiders. I get pictures of my <laughs> of my buddies, and when I'm raiding those faces, um, <laughs> well, I, faces I thought it was so cool, though. Time. I I mean, <laughs> exactly. that's for AMP after dark. But the I liked the, like on that with a 3D function on there with uh, especially Super Mario 3D Land. It's just you can't play it any other way. You can, but it's just those cool puzzle rooms. So AR many. cards. Yeah. Even just like Santa's Returns, just having a little bit of depth, just a little bit of blurry ghosting all the time <laughs> with a little bit of strange getting my head just right. Um, I so loved I- that. So yeah, I, I agree that that we're probably going to see a Switch Mini, um, and I, I mean Nintendo has to. It's been long enough, and there hasn't been any sort of iteration on the on the console so far. And they love their two skew like you know mm-hmm. yeah. uh, approach to their business model. So it's and you know the 3DS is pretty much gone. Um, so I could definitely see this becoming their cheaper. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you know, their their new 3ds that we have. <laughs> I see this being 3DS. their new newer 3ds, <laughs> 3DS mini yeah. <laughs> XS. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The um, I so, yeah, yeah. I okay. If I had to guess, I would say it gets announced at E3 and it comes out by. I'm just gonna go for the same timeline. I'm gonna say it comes out by the second week in August. Yeah, and um, and you know, I I would be totally excited about that. Um, I just want to say for context also for the new Nintendo 2DS XL that was announced on April 27, 2017, and it uh, came out July 28th, 2017. So yeah. th- this is like a pretty, that was three months for them, but it's a pretty standard quick Now, okay, turnaround. do you so, think it gets announced in the June Direct at E3? Or, I mean, we're running up to it now. So unless it gets announced now um, in some other Direct, because typically Nintendo has had a direct before E3. They have, and they um, often, and they've also had directs right after E3, where yeah, it's always the confusing, like, like, why didn't you guys like announce Christmas this? Part Two? Yeah, yeah, because they yeah. announced, I think the uh, 
one of the, I want to say it was the 3DS XL or something, like right after yeah. E3, like maybe two weeks later, like a very strange. Um, but in any event, the I I think they'll do it at E3. And the reason why I think that is when we look at E3 this year, right, we know Xbox is going to have a big presence. They will announce something for their next Xbox console. Mm-hmm. And I, I bet Nintendo will just work in some type of exciting little hardware announcement, something they can have on the show floor, something to get people's hands on, to be yeah. excited about. Um, I think that ideally a Switch Mini would be, it would come, if let's design it right now, you and me, A&P Designs, we'll put our name on the box right there. <laughs> I would say this, no dock, doesn't come with the dock, but still works with the dock. Joy-Con okay. do not come off. Yep, um, I agree. So it works with, it works with other Joy-Con and controllers though? You can sync them up for sure yep. if you want to use multiple players, but you cannot remove them. Okay. And I think it, uh, otherwise, form factor wise is similar, but just a little smaller. I think it lo- yeah. loses like the IR sensor. I think it has traditional rumble and not HD rumble. Mm-hmm. Um, hopefully, honest honest question is if it retains rumble at all. I think for this reason, it would not be mm-hmm. compatible with Labo. And I think the yeah. ideal price point for this thing would be $200 would be the ideal one, but I could see it coming out at like 229 or something like that. Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, yeah, I agree with all that. Um, I think it's just going to be a, t- you know, a uh, scaled down, you know, and, uh, version of, of the switch. Yeah. I hope I, I want it to come in colors. Like I want it to be I like, too. Hey, the joy con came in colors, but now these are coming. like, that's the fun factor to it. Yeah, like, what if it comes out know? late July with fire emblem and there's yeah. one with the three. Oh, absolutely. In and I, I, Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw, Gryffindor. I'm these just interested to see evil. <laughs> <laughs> how how do they then separate it? how do they make this like yes it's enticing um you know is it the dock like feature like how, what's going to be the differentiating factor of like well then why, why do i buy that one versus this one i think you really know? it's going to be price point like what we talked about before on the show my sister loves animal crossing she's going to want to play this thing she does not have a tv that she uses she would not use it even if she did have you know right. have a dock well, she just wants to play it on the go that's what I'm saying, though. If, if this thing docks, then, like, what's, I don't know. It's like, what's the point of buying a current Switch a- anymore at this point, right? Like, it, like, a lot of people can, like, it, it can get a little heavy in your hands. Like, it just seems like, well, maybe this is yeah, the I'm better. weak. <laughs> mm-hmm. So what is the, I guess, how are they going to be like, you know, this is good, but, like, don't, like, jump ship for this, you know? And, and that's what makes me think about what they also said in that particular quote, which was, you know, a more powerful version isn't in the works, um, though something will be coming down the line, like, you know, a modest upgrade, right? So what yeah. is the modest upgrade that's going to put the, the, the more, I don't know, hardcore Switch uh, in one end and the Switch Mini in another? Because like, right now, I'm like, if both of them came out at the same exact time and one was cheaper and pretty much did everything, but the, the Switch, the Joy-Con's popping off, I don't know, like, I'd be hard pressed to decide. That's a good point. I think Rumble. I think it won't have Rumble, you right. know. And I think it's. I think we're spoiled on the Switch, but it's easy to forget. You know, of course, 3DS never had Rumble. You know, none of the handhelds did, except except for if you had Pokemon Pinball back on the Game Boy, had a Rumble <laughs> Pack. You know, right. things of, um, you know, things of that nature. Um, Game Boy Advance. But for, but uh, for you, portion. right? You pay. You play a lot of your games handheld, right? I mean, right. I, well, you're pr- predominantly handheld. So if you were shopping for a Switch for the first time, what are you like? Are you going well? I'm, that seems like the way better deal. I can throw it in my bag. It's easier to transport. It's, you know, it's like it's lighter, ideally. Um, I think, I think they, you, they have the same screen yeah. resolution pretty much. In fact, I'm sure they'll better. have the same screen. Yeah. I, I mean, it'll be interesting, you know, because it's like, I think let's talk about this. Let's talk about the modest upgrade switch, right? Maybe this will help right. us sleuth out what the mini will be because when we talk exactly. about the modest one, because my gut reaction is hearing that modest upgrade. So we know it's not a big performance change. So it's probably Nintendo making the chipset a little cheaper. Maybe they'll remove some of the bezel on the screen, but I think we'll still have the same resolution 720 when playing handheld, right? I don't think that they're certainly not going to go to an OLED screen. I would be surprised if they went to 1080p screen. Um, but you think, okay, modest upgrade. What other handhelds have had modest upgrades? I think about DS, DS Lite, right? Yeah. But name-wise, that sounds, Lite sounds a lot like a Switch Mini. Well, the, you know? it's the, the new 3DS so, and the 3DS. That's yeah, my, that's was, prob- that seems like more in line with I what think, this is going to be. Exactly. I, th- I think it's going to be something like that. So when we think about that change, uh, it did have a slightly faster processor, but not meaningfully. Right. I think we will see that. So I think it will not be full pro. 
And something we have not mentioned on the show is, for the most recent Labo VR updates for Breath of the Wild and Super Mario Odyssey, Nintendo included like a boost mode, basically. Yeah. Um, and so it's a question mark if other developers will get to access this, but it basically overclocks uh, the Switch such that it's able to uh, output in order to basically render, for example, Breath of the Wild twice at the same time at 30 frames per second so that you can view it through both of the eye yeah. lens uh, for the Lab of VR in the VR mode. It also, from all reports, it cuts down loading pretty significantly. I mean, we're basi- you know, uh, basically taking 33% or more off loading times, which is pretty cool. Yeah. You got to think the battery takes quite a hit. So you do wonder if a modest upgrade might have a slightly better battery. But if we look at our phones, I know we're getting really into the weeds here, but like the iPhone, I love the 10R and the battery I find to be amazing. But but it, but that's like with the asterisk of like it's barely better than the last ones. When you look at that versus like the original iPhone, you know it's like big picture the battery hasn't changed a ton, right? It's not like I all, right. all of a sudden one charge lasts me, God forbid, even two days. You know it's really just like my phone's dying less often during a single day. Now it's not right. a big change, and I think that's just the way technology is. Every time there's an opportunity to improve batteries, um, you know the I work in the medical device field. It's not so different that it's like the things that practically speaking matter even though we all want battery life it's like what are the other features you could use your batteries become better but it's then using that battery to give you the same longevity right. with more features so it's yeah. like am i able to do things that are more you know there's connectivity right do you think it'll have an aesthetic look then like oh do you think like what's you know like think of the you know we were talking about apple watches earlier right like oh they have the yeah. The red ring versus the red dot. Before there was no red dot to signify that it had any sort of LTE feature. Like, is there going to be a racing stripe? Like, what's going to like visually make it uh, different? From I think it'll be very subtle. Switch I think basic. it'll still use the same Joy-Con. Okay. I think it'll really be the bezel on the screen, and I think it'll still be black, like the actual core Switch unit. Yeah. I bet they'll call it something like, you know, Nintendo Switch S. Or something that signifies like a very minor change. That'd be yeah. a lot of S, but that type of thing. Um, and I think it'll you know it'll just replace. It'll still come with a dock. Maybe the dock itself will also be a little more elegantly designed, such yeah. that you can insert the dock not straight down. Right. Maybe and also the front of the dock scratches the switch's screen when you are you know even if you're careful, frankly, just taking it in now. Yeah. So I think those just very small cosmetic changes, um, but not making it an essential thing. You know, new 3D, Nintendo 3DS played Xenoblade Chronicles and Binding of Isaac, and that's basically it. You know, yeah. um, Hyrule Warriors ran better, Fire Emblem Warriors ran better, that's like it. So yeah. um, I think it'll sound like that, and I think the reason why you get the cheap one is just because it's a cheap one. That's my prediction on it, and I think we'll get both those things this year. Um, I really just don't see a reality where we get, like, a Switch Pro. Yeah. Um, I think I think it's probably the screen size is going to be a big factor. You know, like, do you I, think the Switch I, Mini would actually have a smaller screen than the current Switch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so because I think it, it's I think it's going to be like. But if you made the controllers on the side fixed without the Joy-Con, you could you could really reduce a lot of the size and the weight while retaining the same screen you, size. You could, and you know, and you can get rid of those bezels, and I think you could shrink it, but I think it's going to be more shrunk than that. Like, I think it's mm-hmm. going to be the the switch for your kids with the sticky hands and you're like it's going to be the new wedge you know it's going to be the new throw around switch um what do you think are the odds we get a clamshell design Any, <laughs> what would you say percent chance of getting a clamshell zero uh, percent yeah i would say pretty low. i would <laughs> say 90 percent that would be <laughs> No, but yeah, like, I think there's no way, but I love the clamshell. I love just having like Samus Aaron on the front of that clamshell. <laughs> new Nintendo 3DS XL. You know, you know I own a few. She's out there blasting it. Here's another one. New Nintendo 2DS XL. A Pokeball on the front. You hit that button, doesn't hit do a button, dang thing. Doesn't but it looks do nothing. Sick. I love those little designs, little decals. It's like it keeps the thing safe. Doesn't matter. But, you know, I but, have it in four cases anyway. It doesn't matter. Just, there's a clamshell. But just like the new 3DS, right? That the the one that didn't come to the states in, in time, but still came to the states with the the face plates. I can see the this newer Switch uh, Mini being the like w- the one we're going to take more creative liberties with. You know, mm-hmm. the one that's going to have the. like Do you think there's any chance there's removable face plates on oh, for or sure. something like that? For do you think there sure. actually would be? 
For real? No. I think there's no, no chance. No. The, but I they did not see, support like, it over here. They released like 26 or so faceplates. You know I own all of them. <laughs> Green. I, just, I think Love they that. are going to be, it's going to be a solid color, right? It's going to be like, oh, this is your Animal mm, Crossing uh, sure. Switch Mini. And this is right. your Fire Emblem Switch Mini. Like, I just, I, that seems like the most Nintendo uh, thing to me. And finally, what I did want to say around this is, if this thing gets announced in a direct, it's going to be right off the bat. The first thing we're going to see is an introduction to the brand new. Stuff. It's not going to be like, oh, one more thing or mm-hmm. right in the middle. It's going yeah. to be the first thing we see. Um, yeah. And then maybe Next up, later. Kirby Battle Royale right. 2 on the 3DS. Oh, and, and it's coming with uh, on the Switch. You know, it's going to be mm-hmm. a whole bundle yeah, thing. That's true. Yeah. But yeah. I, I could see them just like, that's the first thing we're going to be like, oh, there it is. It's coming. And then we're all going to try to pre order it right away. Right. Um, for sure. So anyways, yeah. So should we continue? Nope. Yeah, let's it. take it to the next because- thing. Uh, I love, I just love Nintendo hardware. And um, I'm going to tell you this. This is now A&P Confessions. So let's get serious. Because <laughs> far have I done it. Have I done a Nintendo hardware sin? But just today, this is a today advancement, Matt. I was listening to a very good podcast, the Retronauts podcast by Jeremy Parrish and Bob Mackey. And anyway, they're going through just like the history of designs and like plastics with an, the engineer behind the flip grip. Who's Jeremy Parrish helped to design it. It's sold by Fangamer. It's very cool. I do have it. It's just a very, it's like a $10 or so accessory that could, you can orient your switch in the vertical position with the Joy-Con. It's, it's really sweet for games like Ikaruga. Um, but the, anyway, they're talking about the DSi XL. Do I need to own that thing? Of course <laughs> I don't. <laughs> However, they're like, oh well, best way uh, to play those DS games. And I'm playing right now Dragon Quest V on the on my new 3DS. Any event. Did I go to a GameStop and get it for barely anything at all? Just pick up one just to play with? You bet I did. So yeah, <laughs> DSi XL in the year 2019. Oh uh, my god, is it a maroon, maroon it red is. one? It's like the burgundy <laughs> wine yeah, colored. Right. It's like this hideous, lovely, awful. Show, show uh, the camera. Do you have um, it? I'll bring it up. You know I have it. Uh, yeah, you know I always have one in our church. My, I'll bring it over in a second. It's, over. it's, it's sleeping. One of my friend's uh, moms who was like um, basically loved animal crossing she had to own it whenever it came out like since the gamecube uh she did not like the 3ds at, or the ds at first because mm. it was too small mm-hmm. and then the xls finally started to show up and she had to have it and there's so like I, that hilarious giant size like oversized cartoon stylus yeah. as well which is like a full pen you know like back <laughs> yeah. in like the bowling alley or whatever there's like those novelty pencils and you're like yeah i know once this thing loses its point like i can never use this again short of like sharpening <laughs> it with like a pair of scissors like the um the stylus is like that it's just like this giant honking but truly it's like larger than this i'm holding up just a standard kind of <laughs> big style pen right now and it's like you know such a wide stylus which i'll have to buy separately but i will be <laughs> the, um anyway i just love nintendo hardware i love talking about it. it's like so fun exciting to talk about and um yeah, it's just a little fun aside yeah that's cool So uh, speaking of, of hardware, we, we, we talked about E3 and Nintendo, uh, we're just going to kind of wrap up this new section, but Nintendo did announce uh, that their E3 Direct will be taking place on June 11th at 9 a.m. Pacific time. Mm-hmm. So that's really exciting. Um, so, you know, uh, 11 o'clock, I'll be, uh, what is it? What, what day is that? What is June 11th? Do we know? You know, what? has it in the past, it's been a Tuesday, right? Let's figure it out right now. It's going to be in the middle of the week, and mm-hmm. I'm going to watch it while I work. And that's June 11th is Tuesday. Oh, great. Yeah, uh, we're on the quarter system, so they mm-hmm. will still not be gone. <laughs> right. So anyways, um, and then, of course, following that, there will be the Nintendo Treehouse. Um, actually, three days of live, of live streams. Um, uh, and they've been, been doing a really great job on that show of, like, They've done some unboxings. They've got, you know, just like... A lot of Amiibo announcements in the past. I suspect one of many of those anymore just because that's died down so much. But they do trickle out like... I don't know. If Animal Animal Crossing shows up... Yeah, I, I feel like that's like the next big like like Amiibo's like second. But the line. Animal Crossing be... Amiibo was like such a fail. Like even <laughs> how many Animal Crossing did you, Mister Animal Crossing himself? How many Animal Crossing Amiibo did you buy? Uh, I, I have Villager from Smash Bros. 
it's bad. <laughs> okay, so, so zero. Well, um, yeah, so, but that was that was for a game that I, no one bought. Okay, no you're telling played. me you didn't play Animal Crossing. Amiibo uh, look, Party Plaza, whatever it was called. <laughs> I'm, I am telling you for certain that I did not touch that game. Well, it's but not I too will... late because ga- I'll tell you what, GameStop's got some old old arse things, and you can pick <laughs> something, you can pick it yourself up at DSI XL for about thirty dollars. Here's the thing, though, is everyone has such nostalgia for some of those characters. Your first villager from whether it was GameCube or uh, New Leaf or you know mm-hmm. even uh, mm-hmm. Wild mm-hmm. World, whatever, mm-hmm. whatever City iteration folk. of the game you showed up. Nintendo on. 64 DD you know, version of Animal Crossing. You want it like J, you know the little blue mm-hmm. J, my yeah, first dog. townsperson. I want uh, him. I would. I would definitely buy him. I would um, kill for. Him. <laughs> I just feel like they will not do that again. But it'd be neat if they even did like one. I I I don't buy Amiibo. I haven't bought Amiibo in a while. I have bought all, pretty much all of the original run of the Smash Bros. I did not get any. I should. Restraint. I do not typically practice, yeah. i.e., Nintendo DSi XL um, <laughs> on the amiibo. More recently, but the amiibo I really have liked are when they release something and it's just like one, you know, or like there were two Fire Emblem characters released for Fire Emblem Warriors. Like I'm yeah. like, oh, I'll get Chrome, I'll get Tiki. Like that's cool. But when it's like when it feels manageable or like things like that, I think are like really neat. Yeah. Um, uh, like I've liked the Splatoon ones when they're you know fewer. Like uh, yeah. I'll get. Uh, yeah, those characters. But in any event, uh, I yeah. like the treehouse. It's fun how they trick all that stuff. It's fun because it just keeps on going. And when the initial thirty minutes of direct, which we assume probably about thirty minutes, just based on the previous ones, when yeah. that ends, there is a feeling of like it's not over yet. You know, which yeah. is exciting because yeah. for E three post credit scenes, you know? exactly <laughs> they keep going. It's like Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two. There's like five of them because <laughs> in like for E three, the big days are traditionally right microsoft um you know kicks it off on monday and then nintendo has their tuesday morning thing and then sony does tuesday night sony's not gonna be there this year and then there's been more and more over the preceding weekend but then like once tuesday's over you're kind of like oh now it's just like videos of people playing which i'm not as into i don't tend to watch as much as those things and so um but for the treehouse it's like there's always a chance you know it's always the weird like yeah Here's an I was, hour on Code I was Name watching Steam. Treehouse when um, uh, the latest Metroid game was announced. Yeah, you know? exactly. That was so yeah. exciting. Like that yeah, was that one of my favorite really games cool. from that year. And um, I would love if Mercury Steam was able to make another. Uh, yeah. But and they showed the Amiibo there too, and the Squishy Metro. Also, you no, know, I got some, that. Something that just just to put on everyone's radar is like to just you know for Ubisoft or uh, any uh, mm-hmm. mostly Ubisoft at this point, but just like just to just. Watch just in case. You never know what kind of mm-hmm. crazy Nintendo announcement. You never know when Just Dance 2019 is coming <laughs> to the Nintendo Switch. I agree. And like we, I Rabbit know you Peach. and Danny probably talked a little bit about the Starlink DLC with all the other oh, Star Fox members. So I'm, I really would love it. You know, I, I bought that DLC. I've not beaten Starlink. I'm not even beating this Fox's campaign. But this one, I will beat that campaign and then have this. And I like that it takes place after that. Yeah, kind of forcing you to finish it to get that story content. But we know from that blog post by the Starlink developers that it didn't quite meet their expectations for sales. Yeah. The physical Starlink Toys right. to Life things were not a hit, and they're not doing it anymore. Um, but we've talked about before how that game, like with the Sony things to like about it, it's a little bit of an, a little bit of stuck between two places with the Toys to Life versus like the Assassin's Creed Collectathon. But the flying and the visuals and the exploration elements are so strong, really yeah. stronger than any Star Fox has been ever, <laughs> you know, right. such that I hope um, I would love it if they were just given, you know, Star, the yeah. Star Fox. Yeah, we, and we've talked about that just to like just you and you, you could even just let it exist in the same uh, universe, you know, that the uh, Atlas star system exists. Exactly. In, you know, and for, Corneria, for this one, somewhere else and ground him on a planet. Take away the R wing. Yeah. Give right. him a little dinosaur fox, body. Give fox. him a staff. Let it shoot fire. <laughs> yeah. Give him a hot girl fox. He's got to track <laughs> on down, you know, use sound effects found in 18 <laughs> other games. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah. In any event, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So, but but let's talk about um, Chris. let's talk about the game that we've been playing now. Yeah. Let's talk about. It. So let's bring it on home with this last thing, Matt. Yeah. You and I have been playing quite a bit of Steam World Quest for the Nintendo Switch. 
that steam, that's a steam sound I'm making. Oh, <laughs> that's the fireball again. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was saying edit in the actual sound effects, but instead we're getting this <laughs> grease. Um, and so Steamworld Quest, latest game by Image and Form. They've made now two Steamworld Dig games. They made the original yeah. Steamworld game, which I believe DSiWare. Never did not play that personally. And then they made yeah. the excellent I loved Steamworld Heist. Yeah. Um, and Steamworld Quest is the latest in that tradition of great ro- robots with cute riding and really a delightfully animated kind of 2D plane looking uh, world that has just it's really great. Game. Yeah, really like the core mechanics are just like so sound that is brimming with personality and color. And um, I've been I've probably put about 10 hours into it so far. And um, I put about like four just. You know, I I'm yeah. loving it. Like I go back to each stage to get all the treasures, which are not that hard to find, but they are fairly easy to miss unless you're look reaching the edge of the screen. And yeah. uh, the I've been playing on hard, which I've been really enjoying. And I it's a perfect. Um, I love a good RPG. This is a card based RPG, but really it's um it's still a turn based RPG. It's closer to something in the vein of like a Final Fantasy than it is a Hearthstone. Yeah. You know, it's like you still are each unit. Uh, feels like they're taking a turn each side at the very least is taking a turn and you yeah. you bring a deck into the battle but what i love about it is the system is so tight such that um it's there's enough complexity that i enjoy comboing the cards figuring out how many like standard build up my meter cards i want to put in the deck versus the right. big attack cards how many cards i want to have um, of each of those two types for each of my three party members and then what role each party member is going to play so as my his galleon, for instance, is he going to be my uh, collect the aggro from the various units, direct the attack at him, buff him up? Or is he yeah. going to be a healing unit? Or is he going to be a unit that delivers buffs and debuffs to the party? Like, there's different ways to play him, but there aren't so many. Like, you could really go one of two tracks for each character. You know, mm-hmm. you can um, have each character either doing a big buff support class, which there's a lot of benefit for in this game. You really, you really benefit because characters have so much HP that battles are kind of long. Yeah. That you really benefit from having a sense of uh, of just kind of more of a long term, like I'm going to do this thing that's going to make me stronger for the next two turns, as because the because battles are longer between fewer enemies. Um, so there's just like there's just enough variety that you're able to have some uh, mastery or I guess like ownership of your strategy, but there's not so much that you're like lost in the weeds. Like yeah. the exploration is very limited. The number of collectibles is f- fairly few. There aren't. Yeah, that's, tons of cards, that, but there's enough cards. The exploration is kind of my at the moment my like uh, uh, the, the lowest thing for me at the moment. Like it's just like I was hoping it would be a little more fun to explore. The walking is kind of like ah, okay. Like I, I I finally figured out how to like speed up my character. Run. Yeah, so the trick <laughs> is holding down the uh, ZR button. But um, yeah, yeah. Um, and the, I mean the worlds of like the different environments themselves. I think like leave a lot to be desired but the actual for gameplay sure. and also yeah the characters are cute the story is kind of basic yeah. um but the gameplay is really good the characters look great the game looks great and yeah. the, the leveling is really fun like i it's just there's just enough complexity that i think it's perfect for um, question for you because i i haven't seen that i haven't seen uh this be any different but like every time my characters level up they all level up at the same time in the same like amount. when you get a fourth character who okay. whomever you swap out gets xp at a reduced rate so oh, okay is. but um interesting the asterisk on that though is that um there's clearly like there are level caps for your chapter so yeah um for instance like i was really grinding out a certain chapter because i could not find these treasures and i ended up having to play it like two or three times and yeah. so I got a lot of XP, but then my characters all, like, my main party members all hit a wall where, like, they were basically getting nothing. I was still getting crafting resources, which is a very simple crafting system. Again, I love that. I love Dragon Quest. That's a game that really has just, like, really fine roots in the just core RPG experience without a ton of complexity, but just enough extra systems to keep things interesting between iterations, but not so many that you drown in anything. And um, this is the same thing. And so there is crafting, there is uh, there a currency like any RPG, but um, it's really basic. You don't need to go yeah. out of way to do any of it. Yeah. And um, I, I like I that. that. That's what attracted me to the game was yeah. that it wasn't too much in any direction. Um, 
You know, but, I had never yeah. like the deck building in the game is really fun. I actually like the, the I think what really got me interested was just seeing the cards themselves, you know, mm, seeing the yeah. different attacks, seeing the the uh, you know, the actual um, art on all the cards. Yeah. You know, like I mean, I've I've collected different types of, you know, card games mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. in You're my day. You're a TCG and, boy. Oh yeah, TCBY. Totally. TCBY. Um, I uh, I just was really I thought that was really interesting and it almost made me regret not having ever played and I know they're very different but uh, you know um, Mario Baseball. Color Splash oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, actually I thought also, about that too it'd be a game it's like bringing to yeah. Switch I hear it's yeah. not even that great but I'm like you know what it I, I would get it on and... Switch yeah absolutely yeah, let me tell you what I wouldn't get on Switch Matt <laughs> <laughs> not one thing um, <laughs> the yeah I agree with you I, I yeah I really I love the character portraits. Like they look like I've taken a screenshot yeah. every time there's a new character. They're yeah. so they like this really cool watercolor kind of aesthetic to it. Um, it it's looks fun. fantastic. Yeah. The game has made me very interested in this type of game. I didn't think I would be interested in a uh, a deck building RPG. Yeah. Um, and it's been really fun. Um, it's just I, simple enough that its systems really pick shine. it up, play it a little bit before bed, put it down. You can come back to it really easily. Like these are the kinds yeah. of games the Switch is made for, and this great developer has just kind of knocked another genre out of the park. Right. You know. Next um, up, racing. <laughs> no, Steam please World God. Racers. No. <laughs> a two D racing game, baby. It, the Let's problem is, it. is they'll do it, and it'll probably be good. You right. know, and then you're like, damn. Oh, and I own two racers. Oh um, shoot, two whole racers. <laughs> <laughs> I would love like a like a a co-op, like an online co-op game. You know, mm. with their characters. Yeah. Uh, the the universe is like really cute. I I didn't feel that affectionate for the story in Steam World Dig. Steam World Dig has the, probably the most. There was like a kind of fun class story in SteamWorld Heist between like the haves and the haves nots a little bit, yeah. which also felt relevant when it came out and is relevant now, but particularly then. And the, uh, um, but it is, they're always a little tropish. This one has like kind of a fun story where the main character, um, she is like really eager to join the guild of heroes who all are like, you know, you becomes clear yeah. fairly quickly that it's like, you know, they would be lucky to have her, and um, yeah. there's nothing to aspire to. But it's kind of her fun, funny little character flaw. And um, so all the characters have cute personalities, but I wouldn't say it's uh, going to win you awards for that. The exploration, yeah. like you mentioned, very basic. But it, then again, like I enjoy the game is broken up into chapters, and each little area is its own chapter. Um, they get a little more complex as you go, but it, it does fit. Like I'm just going to do a chapter right now for the you know for the hour. And yeah. you can kind of do that until all present like a storybook. There's like an intro, intro, outro element. It's like, yeah, because it's all framed around that. It's like a bedtime story. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I, I, it's great. If you if, I mean, if you're listening to this and you're even just thinking about it, it's worth it, um, yeah. especially in this kind of a lull of a of a, I don't know, a game cycle at the moment. I mean, we've got a lot of great games that are coming out. Um, we have already a lot of great games that are already currently out. And I'm sure right. everyone's backlogs are full. But this game's worth it. Yeah. So. Spider King does whatever a spider can. Spins a web any size. Catch your seeds just like guys. Look out. Here comes the Spider-Man. Um, um, Matt, do we want to very briefly touch on Ultimate Alliance 3? Very briefly. Why not? Let's do it. Okay. This is and very maybe not even any end game spoilers, but if you're very worried about it, sign off now. Mom, I know you love the MCU. You, you know what? We watched Ant-Man and Ant-Man and the Wasp, so she knows some of the characters there. But um, If you're like, oh, Matt and Danny just talked about this, mm-hmm. but I'll, I'll want to hear Austin's take. Yeah, here's my take. Tuned. I love that Spider-Man, and I'm looking forward <laughs> to it. I don't think we need to really talk about it, but the Game Informer cover story is really cool, and you can access a lot of that content on their website, and they're updating it throughout the week. And... Um, I'm just like excited to have it, excited for those heroes. I like what Team Ninjas makes. I liked Other M, sorry, haters. <laughs> um, but the it's not a good story game, but I like the weirdness to it. Um, and I would just say that like I'm excited because after Endgame, not to get too into spoilers, but like Matt, you and I were talking before the podcast, like where do they go? And I think of... Kevin Feige and having to come up with like the next big arc like in those final scenes of Avengers Endgame like I just had this moment where I'm like I don't know that anything will be like this ever again like I felt just like so so invigorated and emotional you know I I cried during Black Panther I didn't cry during Endgame but I 
felt um, just like so, just like when I've read a great comic book arc yeah. um, over the past few years of which I've read many and I get to the end of it, especially if I'm reading it as they come out and it's just like, you know, there's just a wave of emotion kind of washes over me. That's just like my collective experience with this long form means of storytelling. And then this payoff that can only really be delivered by enjoying content yeah. slowly and in times when each thing is most relevant. And, um, I was just like, wow, how can they ever like, I, there've been, you know, for every great comic book story, there's another great one. Sometimes you have to wait, you know, half a decade before another really wonderful, you know, story of the same caliber. In any event, there's always going to be another great story. I'm sure they could do it again, but I, it's an overwhelming thought to think about having to be in charge of, you know, organizing any of that. <laughs> right, um, right. How do we, you know, catch lightning twice in a bottle, right? right? So, right. you know, uh, it's a big, real big bottle. But the, and they and, and they have the means. They and they have for you know, sure. They have, they, they have the characters. They've only earned our trust for it. But when I think about Ultimate Alliance, what's most exciting for me is seeing. And I hope the MCU, you know, gets clever or at least not clever, I guess. But I hope to see the treatment of these things like with the X-Men, right? The X-Men were the biggest Marvel property in the 80s and 90s, hugely out, you know, outselling, I mean, massively like uh, Iron Man or even Spidey. I mean, that was Marvel's the savior when it came to bankruptcy on um, many times they were on the brink of it. Uh, Marvel, the X-Men won the Jim Lee issue from the, I want to say 90s was still, is still the far and away the best selling comic of all time. Like as far as a single issue thing, like the um, Marvel could easily transfer that you know, reboot the X-Men franchise, of course, and give it the same treatment. And then those characters could are so interesting and wonderful and relevant still even, uh, you know, to be given a thoughtful story, mm -hmm. um, you know, stories like like that about fighting bigotry and finding themselves and um, things like that are always relevant. They feel relevant now and they deserve a platform to be told well. And I think the MCU and Disney, they've shown that they can do it. Um, but I am excited for this game to see those characters, to have them in the same platform as the, you know, as Captain Marvel, as Black Panther. and. Um, have Wolverine and those things. I don't expect a great story out of this game, but mm -hmm. I hope it somewhat signals things to come. And even if it doesn't, um, that really gets me excited. I hope the Fantastic Four ends up in it. Yeah. Um, I love Doctor Doom and those characters and Reed Richards, especially. Uh, so I, I think just like the potential and just it feels like a great, like there, there, we don't have great movie tie-ins anymore on console, right? But this feels like just a perfect time for something oh, yeah. like this on the Switch in July or what have you. Um, I, and, I, and I mentioned this in the last podcast, which was, you know, this is definitely riding the wave of you know, the MCU and its major success. Um, and it'll be releasing at a time when the, end, the official end of Phase 3 will hit in Spider-Man Far From Home. Mm -hmm. um, so this sure. is, there's going to be just, this, this game is going to do, in my uh opinion so well on yeah. the switch um and that's really exciting uh it, it's got it's getting care players like myself who never played any like marvel game or marvel versus capcom even like none of this would have been that appealing to me but now the mcu is here um you know it's it's opening up these characters and that interest to a whole new group of people who may have never read any of these comics or mm -hmm. know much about the lore outside of the MCU. And it's exciting uh, to then, you know, jump into a game and play with these characters. And yeah, I mean, we are on the verge of, you know, X-Men and, right. you know, Fantastic Four I and all so. of these I other characters. So. so, yeah. I, uh, so good. Okay, I'm, glad, one, I'm glad you can give the listeners your take. Okay. On one last thing. Avengers and game spoilers. Everyone, okay. The Spider-Man far from home. <laughs> trailer okay let me just say this all right so now spoiler yeah. speculation i i like what they did it was a fun like reward for having seen endgame to like spoil so much of it right yep um it was an exciting continuation i liked that the Rousseau brothers were like hey on monday spoilers are free i liked that they got yeah. out there and said that they're such like a name those two directors now we know they're kind of shepherd in the same way Whedon did initially for the MCU, that they yeah. now have that cachet. I love the idea of someone of authority saying spoilers are okay about this point. You've had two yeah. weeks to see the movie. That's great because the conversation is so fun. You want to feel free to do it. Um, obviously, it also opened up the door. No coincidence, I'm sure, for this trailer. And uh, 
But I, what I was disappointed with, I cannot believe they spoiled so much of Spider-Man Far From Home. That is the thing that killed me about it. Like, the fact you have Peter Parker telling MJ that he's Spider-Man in the trailer is like, yep. what yep. do you do? Uh, it was frustrating for me. Like yeah, MJ coming up with it and you seeing that moment, right? Like, it's such a oh good God. moment, I'm sure, in the trailer. Like, now, it's so fun. Yeah, and he but just like, wants to tell her how he feels, presumably. Maybe he was going to tell her he was Spider-Man, but like, you know, but she kind of changes it. But yeah, yeah it's Which like, is like But if they were in the movie, it'd be like, whoa, such a surprise. It's so different than Tom McGuire, Kirsten Dunn's relationship. Like, it's such a fun, you know, subversion of our trope yeah. of the big superhero review. In the same way that Iron Man and Iron Man 1, that was the big Iron Man, Iron Man of course. Huh. Um, great moment. <laughs> and this is like, you know, it's not quite that, but it's still like, a, it's, a, it's a twist on it. That's fun. It's totally cheapened now for the film. Spider-Man Homecoming, same story. It had tons of spoilers in that initial trailer. You saw the whole arc of the movie. And this, I worry it's going to be the same thing. Is there any chance Mysterio is actually from a multiverse? Or is he definitely deceiving everyone, which is his power? So I think, I know. There's no way they, I think there's just no way they end Phase 3 post-Endgame by opening up the multiverse. Like, I think he's... De- okay, Mysterio is definitely deceiving but him. You got, you got he's remember, definitely it's, it's, bad. He's de- yeah. I think Nick Fury is probably also either being conned or is also a tr- an illusion. My illusion. Okay. Right, yeah, and he's I, not actually there. Not yeah. even there. And I think Mysterio, obviously bad guy, multiverse thing, totally fake. And then it will end post credit sting with like a legitimate multiverse tease. Like that'll wait, be wait. it. So you'll find out it's fake and then he deceived him. And then some post credit thing. So based be on like, some reality, yeah. Something yeah. will happen but where he's like, you know, they'll be I like, think, oh, I think the, the multiverse is real, though, right? Like, they're going to use the, I think snap, it is real. the snapping for so many different right, things. For sure. To come uh, it's called the decimation, man. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> um, and what's, I think, why mention it? You know, it's also Sony, and Sony's already explored, you know, the multiverse and, you know, with their Spider Man franchise, and people loved it. And I think that yeah. that's. That's a really cool element of the story. Also, we've already been introduced to the multiverse in the MCU. I mean, it's been yeah. discussed. Um, you know, different parallel things happening. Uh, what was it? It was in Ant Man and the Wasp. Uh, they talk about it. Um, yeah, we talk. Tilda Swinton talks about it as the Ancient One in Endgame. Spoilers there. All oh, right, about right, right, how there you the go. timeline splinters. Yeah. So um, I think for sure it'll happen, but I think Mysterio and the end of phase three and a Spider-Man movie is not going to be the way it happens. Why not? Why, why not? I think, I think it's going to, going to be as twisty as that. I think it's just going to be Mysterio is from another dimension, but he's a bad guy there and he's trying to be a good guy here. And, you and know, his he's name is to... Syndrome and he's after the Incredibles to show them that he's actually a bad guy <laughs> parading as a good he's guy. He's going to have really great um, monologues. Yeah. I think the multiverse thing is faked and it's going to end with someone on a computer, maybe actual Nick Fury being like, well, we really like, wow, we were, like that Mysterio really caused a big kerfuffle about the multiverse. Like, um, I'm glad that one's put to rest. And I'll be like, yeah, good thing the real multiverse secret is safe. And you'll like <laughs> hit a button and then, then, then like, I don't know, Galactus or something will be like, Rrr, and then it will like actually cut. And that'll be like the real end set up. <laughs> and that's what I'm predicting. All right. All right, cool. Uh, so that was uh, Far From Home. Thank you, Austin. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I would say people can spoilers. come back and watch this episode when it posts to see that we got it right before the movie came out. However, this episode will post in May of 2020. <laughs> <laughs> the movie will be out for a year. All right. Matt, shall we end it? Yeah, we shall end it. Okay, Matt, thank you so much for joining me and also you, listener, oh. to another Nintendo podcast where we'll be with you next week. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe we'll do three episodes next week, and then we'll see you in, like, a few months. Um, Happy 2021. Thank you for being with us, and we'll see you in yet another Nintendo podcast. Bye. Bye.